Hello, hello everyone. Today, don't do that with lip gloss on, y'all. <laughs> What's up everyone? Today we'll be talking about the book Capturing the Devil. So this is the final installment, Stalking Jack the Ripper series. I love the series. I'm sad it's over. You don't find too many historical fiction books anymore, especially ones that are mysteries. Historical fiction I find is like a really hard genre. You either have the ones that are just not even good or then they're just hardly in. But this one is actually the rare few that I've actually really liked. And so today we're going to be talking about this book. Okay, so I have mixed reviews about this book. I didn't hate it, but I didn't love it. Now in the author's defense, it's normally when it comes to the last Last book of a series I never like I don't know why. I think a lot of it's all the authors trying to wrap plots up and like you guys are putting in more necessary information. Just I never like it and I think maybe that's because as a reader I grow very fond with the character. So when their story's over I never feel like it's enough. In this book within like the first few chapters Thomas and Audrey Rose are getting married. I knew they weren't actually gonna get married because it's too soon in the book. These things don't happen early on in the book. Something is going to happen here like they can't get married now. Sure enough, they don't. Lo and behold, Thomas's present fiance shows up and I felt like that was such an unnecessary plot point. Like it's one thing if this was like happening in Escaping from Houdini, three quarters of the book in, they're like, let's get married. And then they found out, oh shoot, this is a thing. And then, you know, they worked also in this book to resolve it, the outer conflict and the inner conflict. But that wasn't the case. It happened. And then the fiance shows up. And then at the end, it's like, well, you know, there's a loophole here and it's all right now. So what was the point of this. This book I felt was very filling. One thing the author did do right within the filling that she did in this book was the fact that there was a lot of romance in this and I heard good and bad things about it. The good part of it is, is I find that in a lot of books I've read where the whole series you're waiting for the characters to get together and then they finally get together in the last book and get the very last chapter of that book and there's no more. I mean it's hard to ship someone if you've never seen them together. So I do appreciate that from the author so it kind of made the romance a little bit more believable but it just fell short. But let's just focus though on this fiance. So this woman found out Thomas was getting married, bought passage on a ship in the 1800s, packed everything she would need for at least a two week journey, sailed over to America and figured out where they were. They announced their engagement. They're like, we're going to get married in two weeks. And this woman was just conveniently able to do all that in the 1800s on time. So we actually don't even get to the murder part of maybe here. This is the murder scene, folks. That's it. I don't know. You read the other books. There was suspense. There was you guessing. And I think this is where the book falls short. We knew it ended in this hotel and we knew who the murderer was. I didn't know when this happened too if the author was going to take like creative liberties and create her own murderer just based off of the real murderer or if she was going to disguise his name more and we didn't know. No, no, she just went out right. Like by page three, like they run to a guy and he's like, oh, my name is like, what was it, Henry? Yes, Henry. See, look, right here, I circled the name and I was like, killer? Question mark? And I mean, it even says in like what the book is about. It takes place in this murder hotel. So I thought it was going to be more of, okay, they're trying to figure this out it's when you know something that the characters don't thought it was gonna be more like that and then they get into this hotel like I honestly thought they would check into this hotel and start noticing who weird stuff is going on here let's try to figure it out and it's kind of like a game of cat and mouse like kind of like quickly run before the time is out and it wasn't the suspense was lost when you already knew how this was happening you knew their destination was this hotel so when they were running around saying where is this place where is this place and kind of just already knowing the history of the actual event that took place like the pharmacy and everything else that also took away from the suspense of it all and I think that's where the author fell short. Like I almost felt like the author had good intentions to write about this but then halfway through realized it doesn't really work and then it's like well, let's just put a romance in here and call it a day. And then just Audrey Rose was kind of annoying. All through the book it was like motivational speeches. If I wanted to read a motivational speech I would have read a motivational book. I get it there's always that one point halfway through the book where the character has like their inner dialogue with themselves so when they're contemplating themselves there. I get that but this happened almost every single chapter. One thing is is I get it. Audrey Rose is a feminist. I'm totally for that. That is great. But where this book fell short is she's a feminist in 1800s. Feminism in 1800s, especially 1890, did not look like feminism today. And I felt like the author took Audrey Rose from 2020, well, when this book was published, 2019, and flopped her right in the middle of 1890. And that is where I was like, it didn't work. It worked with the other books. It just didn't work with this. That there's too much inner dialogue. This book was just too much drama anyways. Like with the whole scene when the uncle and Thomas got poisoned. Like that was the scene where they were figuring it out. Why didn't we see that scene? No, instead we saw Audrey Rose sitting at home. And then she's like, huh, their, their uncle died so I'm gonna now go after Scott. 
You know this guy is stalking you. Why would you go after him by yourself? Especially knowing he's targeting you. And then the whole like when they were trying to escape the other engagement. And just coincidentally we find it's in Chicago. The loophole. We must look, go there right now. I don't know. This book was just frustrating to me if you can't tell. Don't get me wrong. I think this book would have worked best as a two-part book. And I know this was the fourth book and this was the last book. But it would have been better if this worked as kind of like the first part. Kind of how it was like you know the relationship and setting it up. And then the second book be more about Chicago and the actual case that they were working on. And then you at least had that relational foundation but you also had it setting up for something. It kind of worked more as oh look we're in love and life is great and oh there's a murder case. Darn. Like can this book even be considered a mystery if you know who it is before you start reading it? So this book focused more on the relationship than the actual mystery. Don't get me wrong I love Thomas Cresswell but if I had to hear him say one more declaration of love to Audrey Rose and how it's her choice I was ready to scream and throw the book across the room. Like to best describe this book is Audrey Rose and Thomas say again and again after again how much they can't live without each other and then other stuff happens. I like the book like don't get me wrong I know from this review you're gonna think wow you really hate I didn't. I didn't hate the book. If there was another book after the series I would have loved this book. It was just the fact that this was the last book of the series. The fact that we had to read two marriage scenes and two proposals was just like Okay. How we see in the epilogue, we see two years after these events. I wish there was more to it. Honestly, I wouldn't mind if they also wrote like another book and just kind of like, this is their life now and they go on another murder mystery, like something like that. Like I said, I don't hate, I didn't hate the book. Like I couldn't put it down. It was good. But just considering this being the final, I was a little disappointed. It is a hard book to write for the author because we already knew who the murderer was. We already knew the setting of this place. And so if the books are right off the bat in Chicago in the hotel, then it would have been a kind of a boring read. But I think the author just took too long to get there. That's what I think the downfall of this book was. I like the book though. Like it wasn't a bad book. I'm not saying that but it's just I think more time was spent on some details than it should have been and I felt like this relationship should have happened more in the last book and then continued on in this and then like half of it being the relationship and the other half being the actual case. I hate how it's like oh Audrey Rose just went in, defeated him and then the end. That's it. End of story. I get it. Author wanted her to be her own hero but this doesn't make any sense. And I just also find it funny too is when I got to the epilogue I actually had to leave for work which happened in Escaping Houdini and I had to wait to read it. But overall I did like this book and I hope this review didn't make it seem like I didn't because I did. It was just there were things in it I was like yeah really it was a fun read. I did enjoy it. As a final it wasn't my favorite but as a book alone it was pretty good like I enjoyed it. Like as a book alone I would give it probably 4.5 out of 5 stars but as a final installment maybe 3.5. I think I just had too many high expectations. So you read the last book and you have to wait a whole year. There's time for you to build up your own ideas. I'm also like surprised Houdini wasn't even a, just even a smidge because he actually was at the Chicago World Fair. Also, I've seen some people hate this idea and I saw some people like this idea. It's how they're connecting Jack the Ripper to H.H. Holmes. And I thought that was actually a kind of cool idea. I mean, it's historical fiction. I'm not going to sit here and be like, yeah, it needs to be 100% accurate. And so I actually did find that a really interesting aspect and idea. The whole thing of her brother not really being the killer, I was like, eh. I don't know, like I took away from the first book a little bit, I still enjoyed it and I, like I said, I do really think that twist that she put in it was actually kind of creative and cool and I think that's also kind of gave a good aspect to the book and it added to it. And so if that's what I thought of the book, please let me know in the comments below if you thought of it. If you liked it, please let me know what you liked about it or if you disliked it, let me know that too. Thank you for watching. Bye!